Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this episode, we are going to discuss some maintenance for our trailers. And this is something that gets neglected very often, but it's critically important. The last thing we want is to be out in the back bush, camping at a beautiful lake and have a breakdown from our trailer. So this episode, we're gonna discuss how we can pack our bearings, set the preload on them, and also adjust our electric brakes. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Let's get into it. So all these parts in my guide, my how to build a cargo trader guide, I lay out all the axle parts and that's what you can see here. So this is an electric brakes setup. Sometimes you can get a hydraulic brakes, but in this uh, video, we're just going to discuss our electric brakes. So in here, we've got our brake drum in that brake drum. It's got a bearing in the back bearing in the front. Basically right here we can see that. So we've got our big bearing for the back, our seal. So the seal is located just right here. And then we've got our bearing in the front, then the, the washer, the nut, and the cotter pin to hold that all together. Let's jump over to the other side and I'll just show you how this thing works. So here's our braking system. First off, you can check the thickness of your brake shoe. Make sure that there's a lot of thickness still left here. And then how it operates is this is actually an electromagnet. You can see the wires here. So when you apply the brake inside your brake controllers, sending a pulse to this, and then this is basically sticking to the drum as it's spinning. And as it's, the harder it sticks, the more it operates. And you can see here, see how it pulls that? And it applies your brake just like that. So that's what's applying your brake as you're going along. So to do the maintenance in this, what we're going to do is we are just going to pop off these springs and I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on each one of these pivots and a little bit of anti-seize down here on this here. So this is our adjuster down at the very bottom. Can you see that? All right. It's a star wheel adjuster. These threads right there seize up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that adjuster out and I'm going to put some anti-seize on it. Uh, some axles, they have a Zerk fitting right here. They're easy grease and then it's got, there's a hole all the way down and it comes out right here in the middle. When you, you pump in the grease here, it greases your bearings automatically. Those are great. But again, you, you got to be, a, there's a few cautions with that. First off, you don't want to put too much grease in here. You can blow out your seal. Or if you get grease back here, back where your brakes are, then you've got grease flying around inside here. And that's going to cause your brakes not to work. So it's still a good idea, even if you've got these easy grease axles, to still replace these seals once in a while. They do wear. And that's what will let, you know, water, brake dust, that sort of thing in there. So now that we know what all the parts are and how the assembly works on the other side there, Let's just discuss what we do in maintenance. A good idea to check first off is the magnet on the other side. Make sure that it's not worn through. You see the surface here. Make sure that's not damaged too much. And what I do is I just take with the drum, I take some really coarse sandpaper and I just sand this drum. Sand especially this rust ridge here off of there. So you sand that all out. Then it'll slide on and off as you're uh, adjusting, as you're putting this on. It works well. To get this seal out here, I usually just use a pry bar and what I'll do is I'll just put a pry bar in there and just pry that that seal out or you can use it if you flip around this side and you can tap it out this way. Here's the new seals we've got. These are just Rockwells, but there's a lot of different manufacturers that make it's a standard size seal. Here's our bearings. They've all been cleaned out. What I used is I used just a little bit of diesel and an old paintbrush just like this. You can use anything you've got. If you've got a Varsol tank, great. If you've got gasoline, whatever. Basically, what we want to do is we just want to get the old grease out of here. Why? Because a lot of greases, they're not compatible. And it's also got impurities in it. So it's just cleaning out all that old grease out of this bearing. Okay, so now we've got this, you know, 99% clean. What do we do? Well, what I do is I use uh, my shop air and I'll blow it out and use brake clean at the same time. The brake clean seems to take off any residue from the diesel fuel or whatever you've got in there. Just makes it really nice and clean. With the shop air again we don't shoot it over top. We don't want this spinning 
at a high rate of speed without any lube in it because it will pit these little rollers. One thing we're looking for before we repack this bearing is we just roll it and look for any damage to the rollers or any, there, any pitting. And same in the race in the drum. Is there any damage in there that we need to maybe install some new bearings? So these look good. This looks good. I mean, I just installed these, I think, two years ago. So yeah, they've been well maintained. There's no problem with them. Now, how do we pack them? Well, I just use uh, normal EP grease. You can get a lot of different types. And if you talk to every single person, they probably get a different idea. So the important thing is just that it's EP extreme pressure. Uh, and what I'll do is I've actually got a bearing packer. And what it does is you just place the bearing in it and you kind of push it down and it squishes the, the grease through it. But for your benefit, you probably won't have a bearing packer. We'll just do this by hand. So what I'll do is I will just take some of this grease, I just squish it out. This is not going in my grease gun. This is especially just for packing bearings. So I'll put a little bit of grease in my hand. And what we do is we force it right into that groove right there. And we do that through a rolling motion. We just push it, force it right in. So let's just do that right now. You just take off a little, it's like you're taking a little bite out of that grease each little bit. And you know you're done, you can roll it once it starts coming through the other side. So do you see how that grease is coming through there? So this is the side we're forcing it in, and then you can see it coming through the top. So once it's come through the top, you know that you're good, that's, that's packed. So this little section here now is packed. So now we just roll the bearing, and we do this section. And then we just continue that, roll it, and so on. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna pack the rest of our bearings. Okay, so our bearing's all packed now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it in the drum. Uh, if this is a new drum or even a used drum, I just like to put a thin layer of grease inside here in the cavity between the two bearings. That just stops if any moisture gets in there, it stops from rusting. You don't want the rust getting into your bearing. So that gives it, so I've done that already. I put a nice thin layer of grease in there, a little thin layer here on the race, but this has got quite a bit of grease on it. So I'm just going to drop that in there. So for the seal, what we're going to do is we're just going to pack all the way around here with grease. That's going to keep this little garter spring from popping out when we pound that seal on. So we've got all of our grease in there now. Now I'm just going to pound that on here. To do that, I'm just going to use a driver, just a seal driver that'll go in there, pound that down. Uh, you could use anything that's flat that fits on there. that's it nice and simple that's done this is ready to go back in so now that our bearings are ready we've got to get this assembly ready the electric brakes so again like i mentioned we are just going to lube up this top pivot and we are going to pull out this self adjuster and uh, lube that up put some anti-seize on it so to get that out we just release this this spring that snaps into there pop that spring out and then we pull this self adjuster out of here and you can see how dry that is top pivots all lubed up now to put in the star wheel adjuster here just make sure you line up the this part here with the window that's in the back so that you can adjust this once the assembly is together so what I'm doing is I just cleaned off the spindle here uh, all the old grease and then I'm just going to put a nice thin coat on here again it just stops it from rusting in case any moisture gets inside here then it won't rust. And I'm just gonna put a little bit right where that lip seal goes there. Now I've got my drum. I've got my, uh, I set my shoes already fairly close. Now how I set this is because we just jammed it all full of grease, we got to really squish that grease out and then we kind of set the preload. So what, or there's oh, no preload, but anyways, what, what we're going to do is I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit as I spin the drum. So that's just kind of squishing all the grease out of the bearing and it's causing it to run through. Now I'm going to back it off a bit. I'm going to back it off 
about that much. I'm going to feel if it's got any side to side play. So that's about, per that's pretty good right there. Basically this right now is finger tight. But we did tighten it up just to squish that grease out. So finger tight. That's right where we want. Right now what's dragging is the, the shoes. So I'll throw a new cotter pin in here now. So there we go. So that's set. Now my bearing's set. Now I just need to adjust my brakes. But honestly, it feels like it's good right now. It's got a little, like, real slight drag on the shoes. So now we got both of our drums on. Uh, everything's ready to go. To set our brakes, we just take this little plug out of the back here. Just that little plug. And then in there, we can use a little pry bar, like this, kind of a little pry bar. Or a brake tool. You can buy these at any automotive place. And then that just goes right in there. And you can feel there the star wheel right there. And basically you just turn it. So as you're turning it. Whoops, wrong way. On this side, on the left side, it's down. So as you're turning it, you can hear it clicking over top of that spring. It's tightening up. And then you just spin, spin the drum. See right now there's no friction, so that's not good. It needs to be tighter. That's what you're looking for, a real light drag. If you go, uh, like after doing this job or even before, if you go and hitch, like hitch your trailer brakes and it pulls one way or the other, it's usually these are not adjusted right. So one side's tighter than the other. It's uh, coming on sooner. And so it pulls your trailer whichever way. Um, so that's why it's really important to set them. The important part here is just to set them the same. Okay, that's it. We're done. So we're good for another year. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Hopefully it gave you the tools to be able to do this at home for yourself. It's something we're doing every year. So why not? Uh, the sooner you start, the easier it'll get. Next year, it'll be no problem. And it's kind of nice to get in there and see how everything is for yourself on your own trailer. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Also, I do have a guide on building cargo trailer campers. So check that out. I'll link it in the description and I'll link it up here, up top. And if you're considering building a cargo trailer conversion uh, camper, I would highly recommend it. It's a lot of the things that I wish I would have known when I started and it makes the process a lot smoother i feel so we're getting into my favorite season of camping winter i love camping in the winter and so stay tuned we're going to get some good videos and we're going to do some good camping so thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video